Welcome to my home. Uh, my name is Becky, and I thought since we're all learning to wash our hands really, really well, and we're all staying home, and even the libraries are closed, I thought maybe I would read to you from here. So I looked through my books, and I found an author that I really like. His name is Eric Carl, and he's written a lot of books about animals. But Eric Carl is also the illustrator of his books, so he wrote them as an author, and he did all the artwork as the illustrator. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, some of his books have a lot of words in them, but some have only a few words, and some have no words. And I kind of like that too, because I can make up my own story if I want to. So let's start with one, two, three, to the zoo. Oh, lots of numbers there. All right. No words on this page, but it starts out with a train engine. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Then we're at the zoo. We open it up and we can see all the animals that came to the zoo riding on the, that came on the train. Let's look at the story again. Only this time, we're going to look at the bottom of the page. So remember at the beginning, um, Eric Carl had an engine and a hopper car. Then we go to one elephant. But down here on the bottom of the page is our engine. What's going to happen next? Two hippos. But down here at the bottom we have our engine and our elephant. Three giraffes. And at the bottom of the page we have our one engine our one elephant, and our two hippos. What's going to be on the bottom next? We have four lions, and our train is getting longer. The engine in the front, followed by our a car with the one elephant, the two hippos, and the three giraffes. Let's see what's next. Five bear. And look at our train, it's gotten longer. Engine, the one elephant. What comes next? Two hippos, then three giraffes, and four lions. Oh, next page has six alligators. And look at our train. It's so long, it's almost on to the next page. Our engine, then our one, um, elephant, our two hippos, three giraffes, four lions, and five bears. What's going to be a thought of next? Look at our train, it's on the next page. Sure enough, we've got our one elephant, our two hippos, three giraffes, four lions, five bear, 
six alligators, and up here we've got our seven seals. And look at our train is so long. Engine, elephant, hippos, giraffes, lions, bear, alligators, seals, monkeys. Here's the monkeys at the end now. And then snail. Ah, snakes. And let's look at our train now. Oh, our train has, here's 10 birds, and our train is almost to the end of the page with the engine, our elephant, our hippos, our giraffes, our lions, our bears, our alligators, our seals, our monkeys, our snakes, and then at the end, oops, yep, then at the end, they reach the zoo, and all of the, tr all of the um, train cars are empty because the animals are no longer on the train. They're all in this beautiful illustration of the zoo. I like that book. I like that being able to look at it a couple times and see something different each time I look at it. Well, here's a book, too, that has a couple words on it, and we're going to uh, look at that. It's called, Do, Do You Want to Be My Friend? by Eric Carl. So, do you want to be my friend? This is a little mouse. Oh, we see this nice long green at the bottom of the page. I don't know what that is. Let's see. Do you want to be my friend? The mouse says to this brown tail. You get to think about what could that brown tail be from? What animal has that tail? Oh, it's a horse. Now we see this green bumpy tail. And the mouse, what do you suppose the mouse is saying? Do you want to be my friend? I think maybe he does. But who's got that big, bumpy green tail? It is the alligator with a bird on it. So the, the mouse goes over here. And here's a skinny tail with a fluff of hair at the back. And here's the mouse probably saying, Do you want to be my friend? Oops, to the lion. Hmm. And then, oh, what's way up here? It's blue. Interesting. And the mouse is jumping up and down. His mouth is open. Do you want to be my friend? Oh, look at that little blue tail belong to the hippo. So okay, the mouse moves on. <gasps> look at these. Hmm, that's an interesting shape of that tail. Do you want to be my friend? Oh, it was a seal. And then he moves on to this curly tail. Skinny, curly tail. What animal do you think that could be? It's a monkey. He goes on to the next animal. Do you want to be my friend? He says to these beautiful, beautiful feathers. It's a peacock. Then he comes up to this bushy red tail. He says, do you want to be my friend? Who has a tail like that? Oh, it's Mr. Fox. And then he sits on this long tail. Hmm, who could that belong to? But remember, see this? We got this green going down all the way across down here. Oh, look at the brown tail is to the kangaroo. And then her baby Joey is in her pouch. He sees that tail way up there. That looks like it's way up high. That animal might be tall. Do you want to be my friend? It's the giraffe. Look how far that giraffe has to lean down to talk to the mouse. There's a little, little, little tail there. The mouse has his mouth open. Do you want to be my friend? And it was, and the other mouse says, yes. And so they start playing together. Oh, look at the screen. It's key go, goes around like this. What could that be? Hmm. Hmm. The mice are playing in the bottom of the tree. Here it keeps is that green thing. 
What are they doing? Oh my goodness, that green thing was a snake. Oh my, oh my, what's going to happen next? Ah, uh, look, the mice go down and into their little hole down in the ground where they're safe and they can play and be friends. The end. It's kind of nice to have books that don't have a whole lot of birds in them. It's pretty fun. Well, Eric Carl wrote about other animals. And this one is the very busy spider. Early one morning, the wind blew a spider across the field. A thin, silky thread trailed from her body, and the spider landed on a fence post in, near a farmyard and began to spin a web with her silky tail. Nay, nay, said the horse. Want to go for a ride? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Moo, moo, said the cow. Want to eat some grass? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Baa, baa, -a, bleated the sheep. Want to run in the meadow? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Ma, -a -a -a, ma, said the goat. Want to jump on the rocks? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Oink, oink, grunted the pig. Want to roll in the mud? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Woof, woof, barked the dog. Want to chase a cat? And again, the spider didn't answer. She was busy spinning her web. Meow, meow, cried the cat. Want to take a nap? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Quack, quack, said the duck. Want to go for a swim? The spider didn't answer. She had now finished her web. crowed the roaster. Rooster, want to catch a pesty fly? And the spider caught the fly in her web. Just like that. Who, who, asked the owl. Who built this beautiful web? The spider didn't answer. She had fallen asleep. It had been a very very busy day. That reminds me of a song with spiders in it. And you might know that too. It's the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. Let's sing that together. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun that dried up all the rain. So the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. Thank you for singing with me. I like that. Well, I have another book by Eric Carl, and I think it's a favorite for a lot of kids. It was my my kid's favorite is two. It's the Very Hungry Caterpillar. So let's start with this one and see what happens to the Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg laid on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came out and pop, out of the egg, came a tiny 
and a very hungry caterpillar. It's way, way down over here. Well, he started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he still was hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums. And what do you think? Yep, he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries. One, two, three, four. Oh, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges. One, two, three, four, five. But he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole at the end of the cocoon, pushed his way out, and <gasps> he was a beautiful butterfly. That's the end. It tells us all about what a caterpillar does. Um, I don't think all caterpillars eat through all those, that food because they like that nice green leaf. Well, that reminds me of a song because the caterpillar went through all those days from Sunday to Sunday again. So these are the days in our week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then we go back to Sunday. So I have a song that goes through those days and it says them two times in a row. You can try and sing it with me. If you don't know it real well, that's okay. But I, I'd like you to try. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in our week. And those are our days. I, I told you I, I would... Um, show you a little bit about the illustrations that um, Mr. Carl uses. And if you, let's see if I can find a good example in here. Well, all of these dots are um, multiple colors, but he cut out the whole color, but you see there's streaks of designs in there. So what, he, and let me see what I can do. And our son has a mouth, but you see there are all kinds of different colors in the rays, but still that's just one one piece, one long rectangle with different colors. And here's how you can do some of that. So I took some paints that I had and some cardboard that was from, I had extra from a package. And I put on, used a brush, painted my red paint, and did painted over some pink paint, and then, um, put darker red here and lighter pink there and just kind of blended it all. And then I put my brush, after I cleaned my brush, I put it in the white paint and then made kind of polka dots all around. And then I used a cookie cutter and I um, traced around with a pencil the shape of the heart and then I cut it out. So 
you might want to talk to the adult in your in your home right now see if you have some paint that you can experiment with and try to do different things and please be very polite and ask then you can ask your um, adult if you can trace around um, a cookie cutter or maybe you want to put your hand out there and trace around that and you might need some help with cutting out and that's okay but that would make a pretty picture now another way to do this I use some more cardboard and I used uh, markers oh this one's crayons this one's crayons and I did some yellow and I did some orange and a little bit of brown and I, I went oh instead of just across I did some circles in there you might be able to see some of the circular ones I did so maybe I could make this into hair for somebody maybe it would be part of a lion maybe it would be a Sun I don't know I tried I experimented with another another thing I got a paper bag and this one I used markers now the markers didn't blend so well but it makes a different thing I was trying to figure out what this could be it could maybe be a fish I don't know what do you think um, but what mr. Carl uses is tissue paper um, even something that's um, thin it's white and it's thin and the um, and then he uses paint and the paint and the water blend and make really cool colors I really like that I think that's a cool thing to do um, thank you very much for listening today to our stories about Eric Car written by Eric Carl I hope you um, enjoyed him and his books um, they are at the library many of his books are at the library um, it's Eric E-R-I-C and the last name is Carl C-A-R-L-E so um, I hope you are in enjoying your time at home and reading a lot of books please stay safe bye